These two saws right here, the Husqvarna 450 Rancher and the Husqvarna 455 Rancher. They're both really good saws for that person who's cutting firewood, you know, to heat their home and stuff like that. Or the farmer who's got to go out and clear fence rows and those kind of things. But it can be a real toss up trying to figure out which one you want to buy when it comes time to buy one. So in an effort to help save you a little bit of time when you head out to the dealership to pick out your new saw, and to kind of help your sales guy you deal with at the dealership from having to answer so many questions if it's a busy day. Uh, we thought we'd take the time here to show you some of the differences between the 450 Rancher and the 455 Rancher. So we'll start back here at the control area at the rear handle where your throttle and everything is. You can see here we have the 455 Rancher on the left. We have the 450 Rancher on the right. The 455 Rancher has separate levers for your ignition kill and for your choke. On the 450 Rancher, everything is combined into one. You pull out and flip that red lever the whole way up to engage your choke. And then when you want to shut the saw off, you push it the whole way down and it's a momentary stop switch. It kills the ignition, but it springs right back to the run position so that you don't take a chance of pulling and pulling and pulling the rope and flooding the saw out. You can also see here that the 450 Rancher has the flip-up style caps on the, the fuel tank, where the 455 Rancher has the old style caps on it. There's also a sight window there for your fuel level on the 450 Rancher in the corner of that gas tank, and there is not one on the 455 Rancher. Looking here at the top of the two saws, you can see we have the 455 Rancher on the left. It requires a screwdriver to remove the three screws to remove the top cover to access your air filter, your spark plug, and the top of your engine. And then, of course, you have to screw them back down when you're done servicing everything and want to put the saw back together to use it. You can also see that there's a decompression valve there on the 455 Rancher to make it a little bit easier to start. On the 450 Rancher, it has the snap style clips on it. So you just pry them open, remove the top cover, get into your air filter, your spark plug, the top of your engine, and you simply push them back into place, snap it shut, and off you go. So here's a look at the bottom of the two saws. We have the 455 Rancher at the bottom, the 450 Rancher at the top. You can see they both have the anti-vibration springs. They both have an aluminum chain catch. There's a big difference, though, in the way the front handle mounts to the saw. On the 455 Rancher at the bottom there, that whole gray area is the front handle. And you can see that it mounts to that anti-vibration spring and then goes the whole way to the back and fastens into the gas tank. On the 450 Rancher at the top there, the fuel tank runs the whole way to the front. And that's what the anti-vibration spring mounts onto. And your handle is that slim gray area there that comes in through the, the fuel tank and seats into that groove in the fuel tank and fastens in there. One other important difference that you'll see right here in this picture is down here on the 455 Rancher, down here by the bottom, there's a screw here on the bottom because it has an adjustable oil pump for the bar oil. The 450 Rancher does not have an adjustable bar oil pump. Inside the clutch cover, as you can see here, both of these saws, the 450 Rancher on your right and the 455 Rancher on the left, they both use the same style clutch. They both have an outboard clutch setup on them. The 450 Rancher uses a 325 chain, and the 455 Rancher uses a 3H chain. The other big difference that you can see here is that there are two bar studs on the 455 Rancher, so you have two bar nuts that will have to be removed to remove that clutch cover and to remove your bar and chain. The 450 Rancher uses one bar nut. It has one bar stud sticking out through the cover. Take that one nut off to remove your clutch cover and to remove your bar and chain. There are two posts there that will fit into the groove or the slot I should say on your bar to help steady it up since it is missing that second bar stud to uh, line everything up. Here you can get a better look in at the engines of these two saws. Now in this frame here we have the 450 Rancher on your left and the 455 Rancher on the right this time. You can tell that obviously by the decompression valve up there uh, next to the spark plug on the 455 Rancher. But you can see there's a big difference in the air filters. On the 450 Rancher, it's going to draw that air in from the top side. And it's at the back there, and it's going to keep that air cleaner pretty clean because everything's coming in from the top. And there's also a better wall between the engine 
and the air filter, well, the carburetor and air filter area on the 450 Rancher. So it keeps a lot of that hot air out of there and keeps your, your air fuel mixture that's coming into your carburetor a little bit cooler, gives you a little bit more power. And on the 455 Rancher, the air filter, you can see it's completely plastic there on the top. It's going to draw its air from the bottom. And there's not as much of a barrier between the engine and the uh, the carburetor and air filter area there. So there's it's going to allow for a little bit more dirt to be able to get in there. And with it drawing the air from the bottom side, that dirt's going to suck right up to that air filter um, and, and cause that air filter to need to be maintenanced quicker on the 455 Rancher than on the 450 Rancher. You can also see here in this frame that the 450 Rancher is a bit slimmer saw than the 455 Rancher. There is a pretty significant weight difference between the two saws, and we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. Um, again, the 450 Rancher is on the right, the 455 is on the left, and you can see that there's definitely better visibility through that, that hand guard, your handle for your inertia-activated chain brake there in the front. You get a little bit better visibility through that window on the 450 Rancher than on the 455 Rancher, which has the thicker bar there in the middle. So that's just something that's a matter of preference to some people, but we thought we'd point it out since you can definitely see it here in this frame. Now, both of these saws use Husqvarna's air injection method of pre-cleaning the air, getting the big chunks of dirt and debris out of there before they get up to your air filter. And this black um, baffle here, um, the, the, the black guard you see around the flywheel, that's what helps with directing the air to throw that stuff back out of there and keep it from getting up into the engine compartment to your air filter. This is on the 455 Rancher here, and the main thing to look at here is that blue wire running across there, and you can see your spark plug lead across the top. This is a big difference between these two saws. Here on the 455 Rancher, you can see that the ignition module is mounted to the crankcase, and on the 450 Rancher, it's actually mounted to the cylinder. So the one on the 450 Rancher is going to end up absorbing more heat and theoretically going to need replaced before the one on the 455 Rancher would because it's not absorbing all that extra heat because it's not mounted to the cylinder. Now here we have our 455 Rancher in the front, the 450 Rancher in the back. Wanted to point out there that the 455 Rancher still uses the old style caps with the slot in the top. And the 450 Rancher uses the new style flip-up caps on it for the bar oil and the uh, the fuel tank. And yes, both of these are 2020 serial number saws, so it's not like one was old stock and one is new stock. So those are some of the more obvious uh, differences between these two saws and things you want to take into consideration when you're looking at purchasing one or the other. Now, I will tell you, if you've never picked up the 455 Rancher and then picked up a 450 Rancher, the 455 is definitely wider, longer, and heavier than the 450 Rancher. You will notice that right away when you go from one to the other. So we'll take a look here at the tail of the tape, and you can see some more differences between these two chainsaws. Obviously, the 455 Rancher has a larger displacement, slightly more horsepower, and as I was just saying, it is definitely heavier, uh, two pounds heavier, and that weight is, according to Husqvarna, without the bar and chain on it, just the power heads themselves. The minimum and maximum recommended bar, again, this is coming from Husqvarna. This isn't just uh, an opinion or anything like that. It is a minimum of 13 inches and a maximum of 20 inches. Some people confuse the 455 Rancher with the 460 Rancher and the old 465 Rancher which you can put a 24-inch bar on, or a 28-inch bar, I believe, in the case of the 465 Rancher. And I believe just because it can fit on the 455 Rancher that they should use it on there. Not the case. Husqvarna recommends not going any bigger than a 20-inch bar on that 455 Rancher. The fuel tank size, you can see that's pretty much the same on both of them. Oil tank volume, slightly larger oil tank on the 455 Rancher. The maximum power speed, 9,000 RPM on both these saws. And a big difference right here is the price. Buying both of these saws with a 20-inch bar, $379.99 for the 450 Rancher compared to $469.99 for the 455 Rancher. So a difference of $90 there. And here's a little bit of a review of some of the stuff we talked about earlier in the video, some of the features and stuff that each saw has or doesn't have. Um, the double bar nuts, they have that on the 455 Rancher, not on the 450 Rancher. 
The combination start choke lever on the 450 Rancher, not on the 455. The flip-up style oil and fuel caps, the new style that you see on a lot of the Pro Saws. Yes on the 450 Rancher, no on the 455. The snap lock cover to access your air filter and spark plug. They have that on the 450 Rancher. The 455 Rancher requires a screwdriver. You have to undo the screws. And um, then when you're done, you have to screw everything back down. There is a fuel sight window on the 450 Rancher, not on the 455. The 455 Rancher has a decompression valve. Uh, the 450 Rancher does not. That's to help this thing um, just start a little bit easier, require a little bit less effort. And that's something when you get closer to 60 cc's and up that you want to see on on your chainsaws because, you know, as you get older, you don't be ripping your shoulder out trying to start your chainsaw. Um, I'll be honest with you, though, the 450 Rancher doesn't take a whole lot more effort to start than a 455 using the decompression valve. So moving on again here, the 455 Rancher has an adjustable bar oil pump. The 450 Rancher does not. The auto return stop switch, that is where you, your switch to kill your ignition is a momentary switch and it kills the ignition and then returns to the run position. So the next time you go to start the saw, you don't have to worry about pulling it and the ignition being cut off and flooding the saw out. The 450 Rancher has this feature where it automatically returns to the run position after it kills the ignition. The 455 Rancher, you have to manually reset that. And both of these models have a side chain tensioning mechanism. As we showed you earlier, they both have the outboard style clutch setup and they both have the anti-vibration system in them. So you can see there's a lot of similarities, but at the same time, there's still a good, a good many differences between these two saws. And it's really going to come down to your preference. You know, maybe you need that extra quarter of a horsepower that the 455 Rancher is going to have. Because along with that extra quarter of a horsepower, there's going to be slightly more torque as well. Um, you know, but maybe you don't want a saw that heavy. Maybe your, you know, your back just can't take lugging a saw around. Um, you know, if you could save the two pounds, the 450 Rancher might be the best bet for you. Uh, again, price too. You know, if you've got a budget you got to stick to, um, the 450 Rancher. 90 bucks cheaper, and it's still going to do a pretty good job for you. I mean, obviously, it's that close, uh, you know, in a lot of categories and a lot of features to the 455 Rancher. So it, it's still going to be a good saw. It's going to be very comparable. Um, you know, there there might be something there uh, where, like, the 455 Rancher uses the 3H chains. Maybe you have some chains from another saw of yours that you could use on that 455 Rancher, you know, when you're buying extra chains, they're expensive. So you've already got some laying around. You know, that's something you might want to think about, too. That could save you money in the long run. So, um, again, really a matter of preference. But at least now you see some of the, the big differences between them as far as the features and the uh, the setups of the engines and, and that kind of stuff. So when you go into the dealer, you have a little bit better idea of what you're going to look for, um, you know, what's going to suit you and you don't get to run around and get sent out the door with something you didn't want or have to put the uh, the sales rep on the spot there to answer all the questions you have about the differences between the two of them. So hopefully uh, this video was worth your time and uh, you picked up some new stuff that you might not have known or um, you at least have a little bit more knowledge now. You're a little bit more prepared to go out there shopping for one of these two saws and uh, you're, you're armed with a little bit more knowledge for when you go into the dealership. Um, yeah, we could have taken these saws apart and every nut and bolt and explained every little difference in the parts and everything else between the two of them. But we wanted to cover the major stuff here that most people are going to look for and look at. And, um, you know, it's the kind of stuff that that a salesperson could talk you into and you didn't really need or they could leave out to talk you into taking a model you didn't need. So, um, yeah, hopefully you're a little bit more prepared now, like I said. Um, at any rate, if you have any questions or just want to leave a comment, feel free to do that. Uh, we always appreciate feedback on any of the videos, so just drop something there in the comment section. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And that's going to do it for me. Thanks for watching.